Hello ladies and gentlemen, it is me Parker and today I'm going to do a little news update on the new upcoming game Hearts of Iron 4. Now I absolutely adore Hearts of Iron, I love it to pieces. And so for this reason you can tell how much I was jumping in joy when I heard of this announcement. Hearts of Iron 3 was in my opinion the best of the lot. That's just me, everyone has their own opinion. And unfortunately I have yet to play the first one and I shall do soon. There's been a lot of uh, people telling me how Hearts of Iron 2 was the best, Victoria 2 was the best, but in my opinion it was Hearts of Iron 3. Now, one of the problems with Hearts of Iron 3 though was its final design. It was slow paced, it was, it was a drag I have to be honest. And it was very boring at times, but when the update came I absolutely loved it. Especially the DLCs as he added more immersity basically to it. It was pure amazing. I was steam throwing route. I was steam rolling through countries until I hit Russia, then got bitch slapped by Stalin. I was forced back by the almighty power of its army. But anyhow, on with the news. Oh, oh, oh yeah. And um, also this is coming from the Strategic Informer, which shall be down in the, in the description. And the um, uh, the thing was written by Joe Robinson as he previews the game. And I'm here to give you in that in a verbal sense. In my own words, of course, but you will find it basically almost word for word, but not literally word for word. I've added my own jibe, jibe, uh, jibe, whatever, vibe, that's one. So I've added my own vibe to it, so you know, it's not so word for word. Now, the most impressive feature apparently is its new battle map. And my god, he makes it sound like a god among us. It sounds amazing. The team has improved the engine so that as you zoom out, you are more or less in the diplomatic view of things. You can see all like the countries and you got, eh, and you got the enemy here, enemy there, Russia here, Poland there, Britain there, blah, you know what I mean. And the more you zoom in, you get a much more detailed look. And when I mean detailed, I mean detailed. If your eyes are flooded with colour, you will see the day and the night cycle of the nations, lights, this and that, the other. You know what I mean by that, right? And you can pick out forests and mountains and all this and that and it, it sounds amazing I just hope that my laptop can run it because at the moment it can barely run World of Tanks um, the idea of this is that you won't have to waste your time with toggling on a specific map mode um, and I like that a lot as you can you know spend more time on the actual war or building things or on the tech tree because remember having to like, click on this and that and it, as I was doing this and it, it bogs me down basically. I cannot micromanage to save my life which is bad because this thing is going to be very micromanaged but you know it's something you have to learn one of the new features also is the battle plans which I believe are similar to that in their finest hour well not quite similar but yeah it's similar and has much more of a use Actually, it's not similar at all. It's, it's, it's almost completely different. Whereas in the finest hour, you drag this and that, like, I'm going to go this way, I'm going to attack that, I'm going to go there. In a battle plan strategy, the AI sets up for you. Well, doesn't, you set it up, but the AI executes it. So you can set up your plan, assign units, and the AI will do it all for you. You can do this all you like, but because of this, the AI will do a front for you, so you can pay more attention elsewhere, which I think is good, so you can pay a more attention on like taking on Russia and not getting bitch slapped by Stalin so they can take over like I don't know Norway or Spain or something um, I do have a problem with this idea though because the AI it's, it's AI there is no explanation needed you have seen a lot of games where the AI have taught of terrible terrible things you know it's really stupid and more or less getting killed rather than saving you so the team will have to get this right if the battle plan strategy is to work. Otherwise it will be a complete waste of time until the patches come out. But the team will have plenty of time to fix up, otherwise uh, hopefully it will be all well and good. Uh, and detail just keeps getting more and more and more. And oh, What I absolutely love is the um, oh, production. We'll get onto that in a minute, but for now. This is the phases. Uh, there are five different phases, and the total includes advance, split advance, which is when you know your troops are marching through, and different divisions split off in a branch. It basically branches off, so you can take over little 
pockets or, you know, take over different regions instead of your entire super army just marching forward, steamrolling, and missing all of those and potentially getting surrounded, which is good. The social orders include Blitz, a power drop, and a defensive line. With the year to go, changes are subject. However, this is what has been developed so far. If more is added to goods, if they're taking bits away, then it's probably for the best. Because they know more than us, to be honest, because they're making a bland bloody game. Mm. What will happen though is the AI will attempt, and I use attempt for good reason, to send those units to their specified point, such as a border of a country. There will be a button for you to click activate so units will carry out your master plot of destroying all that there is to be destroyed. The units will also not carry on to the next phase until you clicked on that button again, which I think is a bloody good idea because they won't get ahead of themselves and potentially screw up the plan and die. I think however hard for hardcore players, there should be an option to turn that off so that you know, because <laughs> I won't use it, because I'll probably die in like three seconds, but hardcore players will you know, they're brilliant micromanaging and this and the other. I can't micromanage, like I said, to save my life. Yeah. Production. This is a massive thing, and I don't know if I'm going to like it or not, but, you know, I haven't played it yet. And I think I'm going to love it. The huge change to production is, like I said, I don't know if it'll work, or, like I said, micromanage. I can't do micromanagement. This is going to take a hell of a lot of micromanagement, I think. Um, and anyway, I won't know that until I, you know, play the game with a beta, if there is a beta. The production now is split up into a regional level, like Victoria 2. So I heard, I haven't played Victoria yet. But that isn't all. You, you assign factories to spill specific kinds of things, such as tanks or planes, for example. So it uses the idea of assembly lines to produce them. So the inver immersiveness will be, you know, added. Or I don't know if it's immersive, because I don't know these kind of things. The amount you produce or the speed in which they are made is really depending on how efficient your factories are. This will be by how many factories you control, the strategic resources you have, and those factories that build that product. So basically, build more factories, more tanks you can create. The strategic resources are much more important now because, you know, how much you control will depend on how fast they can be made or how many you can make. Um, for example, if the, if the um, factories are used to building Panzer IVs, they are not going to be as efficient at building Panzers or Tigers, because they are more used to building Panzer IVs, they know techniques, they can do this and that and the other, which I absolutely like. There's also a change to how they build them as well. There are no mediums or heavies anymore, you can tell your factories to build a specific chassis such as a Panzer IV, and once the um, factory summed everything up, you can tell how many can be produced and by when. For example. If you were able to produce four Panzer Force, it shall go into the tank pool. Once that has been done, you can create your own tank regiment and divisions from it, meaning that divisions can be made unique and for a specific task, such as um, you know, police suppressing a certain area, or having like infantry and you know what I mean. They're gonna be more specific and you know, the more you build a specific tank, the better that region is building at it, such as you know, it can be faster made or you can build more. Technology is familiar yet different. With Hearts of Iron 2, there will be a limited amount of slot choices, and also they take much longer to research, meaning that your t choices are much, much more important. You can't just do absolutely everything. There's a limit, and I like, I like that, because then you can be focusing on infantry, tanks, or aircraft, or, you know, what the choices you make will depend on this, that, and the other. So you also, you cannot whiz off right down the line, such as the tank destroyer line. You cannot research it willy-nilly as most tank destroyers in World War II were based off something else. For example, you cannot just research the Yak Panther. You must research the chassis of the Panther first to then research the Yak Panther. Because think about it, how would you make a Yak Panther without the Panther chassis? It's not going to work. Doctrines have also been brought back from the dead and are now laid out in a proper progression chains. And they have actual branching paths instead of one straight line, meaning that you can create your own combat doctrine and how the war is going or how you think it will go. Another thing is the politics. The game will be less scripted than Hearts of Iron 3, so that means the team will only stick to key events, which I personally don't like, because I love the events. It made you learn, and people don't like to learn anymore. Or seem to, anyway. 
that the team was made the event so that it will pop up only when the appropriate. For example, if Germany was being stood up by a powerful nation, it might not have been able to annex Czechoslovakia, so there will be no event message. So that's good. And also, like always, there will be ways to influence a non-historical way to play it out, such as Britain invading the world, or if France has more gears going forward than backwards. You will get rewards for completing tasks, such as Germany taking Poland, so you might get a few divisions of this, or that, or a mix of both, or a mix of three, for example. And maybe you'll get a higher production rates. More more people in your pool, and you, you know what I mean. <clears throat> but, yeah, like, one of the best things I think about the game like I said earlier, it's a production. I think it is absolutely amazing. You micromanage, you can do unique this, unique that. You spend more time in production than actual campaign map, which I like. So I spent way too much of the campaign map being bored at my mind because there's nothing to do. And I'm actually in a production bit, you know, this, that, and the other. The game will also officially end by 1948. However, I like this. You can continue playing until you essentially take over the world, or you get bored of that game and start a new one, or whatever reason. You can continue infinitely. I think it's infinitely or to like 2199 or I don't know. But you can continue on after that, which I like because in Hearts of Iron 2, the problem I had is I couldn't find a folder which changed the date at which the game ended. So I actually ended by 1948 and never took over the world, which I didn't like and this, that, and the other. I really wanted to take over the world, but I didn't. So this is welcome news. You could do it in Heart of Mind 3. You got the um, go into the folder, change the scripts. You know. Uh, so yeah, can't wait until it gets out. But like Joe said, how the uh, with the map, he said it looks and sounds amazing. And he, like I in quotation marks, almost cried when I heard it can't be backported to CK2. End of quotation. So yeah, that's about it. Uh, the game is due for twenty early 2015 release, which I think is too far. It's like one year or two ahead now. It should be like right now. I can't I can't wait to play it. In any case, that's it from me. I'll uh, put the link in the description of the official page, Facebook page, the um game and <coughs> sorry, the strategic informer and it's out in the other, so you can read it off that without listening to my crappy voice. And I think that's about it for the moment. Until next time. Um. So yeah, ta-ta, good day, and good luck. Parker out.